Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Cougar House Garage and another Daihatsu Rocky small block engine swap episode. So today, Levi and I are gonna, gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut out the pieces for the frame side engine mounts, the frame plates, the inner frame plates, and the engine side engine mount parts. And then Levi's gonna go, 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 go ahead and he's gonna get them all ground down on the edges and whatnot, get them assembled. And uh, then, uh, Derek will come over and he'll get them fully welded up and then we'll get them um, also tacked on and welded onto the frame and then the next episode here we'll move on to the transmission cross member and I got some special stuff thought up and some special parts to do to the transfer case that I'll tell you guys about in that episode. So without further ado guys let's get started let's get the sander mounts assembled. Alright guys, we made some pretty good progress on the edge of the day. We're go ahead and we're we're going ahead and we're we've came to a stopping point. You know, it's looking really good. We got the engine and transmission placed where they're gonna live. We got that hole in the floor opened up so we can go ahead and here, I'll show you guys. So we can go ahead and get the transmission and transfer case up as high as it'll go. It's down a little bit right there because the, the jack bled down a little bit. That'll go back up to level. And then we'll get that section of floor rebuilt and put back in there. But my customer wanted me to get it up in there as high as possible. As back, you know, and then back as far as possible, obviously, so it'll fit behind the uh, it'll fit behind the core support, but it needs to fit behind the radiator in the core support. So what's important here is you know without this factory clutch fan those bolts will be taken off and then it needs to go right behind the radiator mount that's where the bottom of the radiator the top of the radiator sits in the core support but the bottom of it sits right there so this will line up and that will be right behind there it'll be a tight fit it's gonna have to have electric fans behind the grill kind of look mad maxi but it's a part of it and you're trying to put a small block 350 and something that was designed for a little four cylinder so yeah, we uh, came to a great stopping point. I've got my uh, frame side inner frame plates designed up. I have my engine mounts designed up and the engine side engine mounts that, that, that designed up. I need to get in the engineering PC tomorrow, get them all tool pathed and go ahead and get on the Bailey plasma table and get, get those plasma cut out. And then we'll get those prepped, tack them together, test fit them, and then fully weld them up after we test fit them. Um, yeah, we're going to do, do that tomorrow. We're just done for the day. We, it was a bunch of time to get this position to where it needed to be. Plus, we were working on the Duramax, too. I made, I made a Duramax video, too, so we made two videos today. But all right, guys, we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow, and we'll continue working on the Daihatsu Rocky, a.k.a. the Yeti. All right, guys. Levi and I got those pieces, or I got those pieces designed up and cut on the plasma table. And Levi got, got them assembled. He got the engine side assembled and the frame side once assembled. So now 
we're all done for today and we'll see you guys tomorrow when Derek gets here and we'll get these engine mounts welded up and then as well we'll put the frame plate on the insides of the frame too and we'll weld those on before we weld the engine mounts in so we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow hey guys back at it this morning Derek's here with me and we're gonna get the frame side frame or the inside frame plates tacked on rather than you know uh, tack them on pull the engine out fully burn them set the engine back in set the mounts back in we're gonna just go ahead and tack those on and then we're gonna get the engine mounts on and then after I build the transmission cross member I'll pull the full setup out and we'll do all the welding and then the full setup powertrain we'll go right right back in and then we'll put the front clip back on and she'll go next to the garage until it's time to three link it. So, all right guys, let's, let's get started. Cue the music. guys we're looking pretty good here I got the engine mounts welded together got them painted with steel it got them bolted on the motor you can see them there you know 
the left side one sits up a little higher than the right side one. You know, kind of way, the way Chevrolet has the mounts on the different sides of the block. But that's a good thing for us in this scenario because there's lots of room for our third link to come up into that space beneath that motor mount when we link it. So that's a good thing that it's like that. So I got the engine or the frame side engine mounts drawn up, ready to cut out the engineering PC. Now I just need to get some somebody over here to help me load some quarter inch in the table. I got a sheet of 316 in there, so I need some quarter inch to be able to cut these out. And then um, we'll get those cut out and then we'll get the inner frame planes welded on and we'll get those welded on as well. But I'm done for the afternoon. I'll catch you guys tomorrow and we'll continue working on this. That cut a really nice hole. My plasma table does not cut holes very good. And I need a higher quality table if I want to cut perfect bolt holes. But yeah, I got these, uh, I cut these out with the Yeti here. And I use these new chromoly coated Viper drill bits that West or Ace Industrial sent out to me to, to uh, field test. They're coated with chromoly. And apparently you're not supposed to use any type of cutting fluids or lubricants with them. Just take your time, just like with any other drill uh, drill bit. And it drilled that hole really, really nice. Like over here's the set. They sent me a large set, and then they sent me a magazine of them here. But yeah, this fits perfect. Check this out. Oh, oh. Let's see if I can do it one-handed, guys. Yeah, that's nice. 
So those drill bits are pretty cool, guys. Check, I mean, it's Vi Viper Super Premium drill bits. Check them out. I mean, I highly suggest them. I mean, I'm a person that, you know, you know, I'll pick up drill bits from Home Depot and they're trash. They're meant for building houses, drilling through a small metal, a thin metal bracket into a piece of wood or something, you know. So I'm always going to like industrial supply stores to pick up, you know, drill bits and shop supplies, stuff like that. And I usually go to uh, Tacoma Screw in Lacey, not, not, to, not, not Tacoma. A lot of people get confused when I say that. And I get Triumph drill bits, American-made drill bits. But these, these are the new ones we'll start using. So, all right, let's finish drilling the rest of these brackets out, and I can test fit them on the, the on the Yeti. <laughs> Cue the music.
All right, I'll finish cutting those out, drilling out their 9 16 holes, and test fitted them. They fit perfect. That's awesome. They fit perfect because I designed them. Just saying. Now anyways, this looks really awesome, guys. I can't get over this. This looks really good. You guys can see the gap on, on the back one. The transmission and transfer case needs to be dropped down a quarter inch. Front needs to come down just a little bit to where they touch. But that's why I have it sitting there like that. But yeah, that's awesome, guys. I mean, just got to weld here and here. And these frame plates, you can see them, the frame plate needs to be welded on first and then, you know, so its weld can go right here and then that will sit on top of it and another weld will pass over it. So yeah, those turned out great. This looks really good for the Yeti. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about it. So is Shane. He was over here yesterday and checked it out and he's pretty stoked about it. And uh, I, I was talking to him and we're going to go ahead and go Atlas. We're going to install an Atlas on this. If we put doublers on it, I mean, it's so short, you guys. If we were to use double transfer cases, I mean, there's no space. Here, let me get you down here without getting you sick. Transfer case, another transfer case, and then the drive line has to go right there. So you can imagine how short that is, how ridiculous that would be. And then we're going to push the wheelbase back quite a bit, so it'll be yet you know, 120 inch wheelbase, maybe 125 uh, inch, and the tire will come past the rear panel and have like positive, or yeah, completely, uh, what, what's it, positive or negative approach where the tire will be outside of the bumper, so, that, so that'll be pretty cool. We'll never have any problems wheeling it. And then we're going to go full hydraulic on it, he decided. We're, we're not using this Dana 44. It's going to get sold, and we're going to get Ford Super Duty axles for it, 05 plus Ford Super Duty axles. Since we're going Atlas, we can just request to have it driver's side drop. So that, that'll be cool. We'll save a lot of money on axles using Ford Super Duty axles. So it's actually, it saves money spending the money on the Atlas. And then we can have uh, Ford Super Duty axles using the uh, driver's side drop. So, so that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, these look good. You know, I may add a little bit of a plate here, and it'll cope it a little bit like that. But I'm not sure. We'll get these welded up first. That's something easy to put on when we're all done. But I mean, those are way overkill. That's like thousand horsepower and en engine mounts. Where this thing is not even making probably 200 horsepower. It's it's an anemic small block 350 out of an 89 Suburban. So, but all right, guys. Awesome. Looks good. Okay, we're all done. Those are ready to be welded on the frame. So as soon as uh, my friend Josh can come over and weld them up, he welded up the engine side ones too. As soon as he can come 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 over, excuse me, he'll weld those all up and the frame plates. And then we're gonna do just a simple like box tubing cross member to support the transmission until Shane saves up to buy his Atlas and then it'll go next to the garage until he's ready to work on it and we'll move on to, to the uh, C10. We've got brake lines and air system to, to install on that, so that'll be pretty, pretty, pretty fun. I'm excited to start working on that one again. But yeah, we'll catch, we'll catch you guys in, in a few days here when Josh comes over and we'll get these welded up and then we'll be all done with this part of the Rocky. All right guys, Josh, Josh is over here. We're gonna go ahead and get all the welding done on, on the Yeti here. We're gonna get the frame plates welded on and then we'll get the engine uh, mounts for the frame side and your mounts welded on and then we'll be all buttoned up. Cue the music.
right, guys. Let me give you an update of where Josh and I are at. He got all the welding done. Let, let me show you. Let's see here. We got the frame plates welded in. It's tough with the engine in here. Both sides. The engine mounts welded on. Inside. Outside. Inside. Looks really good. We went ahead and made a simple, just temporary cross member and welded it across the frame to hold the transmission up until we bring the Rocky back in here in, in a couple months and either we're going to install an Atlas or a Eco Box from Northwest Fab that'll go between his uh, transmission and his 205 Ford tra tra transfer case since we're going to go Ford transfer case on it so we can use Ford Super Duty axles for our link system so that'll be pretty cool. But alright guys, we're, we're going to go ahead and get this finished up and we're going to get this outside and switched with, with the C10 so we can work on that in the next episode here. wraps up this episode guys working on the Rocky. It was pretty pr productive. We got the engine mounts fabricated. They look really really good. They're mounted up and they're nice. The driver side uh, mounts a little bit higher up you know because Chevrolet made the mounts different on each side, side of, of the motor which which worked out good good for us because on the driver side we'll have lots of room for our third link to travel up in, into because it's going to get a uh, front Cougar House Fab 3 link and a rear Cougar House Fab triangulated 4 link. So that worked out really nice for us. And then um, we got our 316 frame plates designed up in the engineering PC, plasma cut them out on the Bailey plasma table, as along, with, uh, along with all the other parts for the engine mounts. And then we got those uh, frame plates welded on first, and then we weld so we could weld our quarter inch uh, engine mounts on top of that. You never would want to run or weld quarter inch uh, pieces, plate, or anything on, on, on the eighth inch frame, so you always had 316 frame plating before you move on to your quarter inch parts. But it, but I digress. That's all finished up there. It turned out really good. It looks good. So now, and then also, I made a transmission cross member. I just used a piece of angle iron and made a little piece of uh, quarter inch to go up and support the, the, the transmission. Because in the next couple months here, we're going to order up a Northwest Fab Eco Box for it. And then that will go between the transmission and a Ford 205 or I think it's a 205 tra a tra transfer case. Don't quote me. I know my Toyota, my, my, my Toyota stuff the most. So we'll, we'll get that transmission transfer case set up like that. It'll be nice and compact for this short chassis here. So that way our front, our rear drive, uh, our rear drive line's not this long. So that, that'll be pretty, pretty cool. So we got that outside and ready until then. So we just did a temporary cross member. So that way we're not building two, uh, two, two cross members for it. So in, in a couple months, we'll, we'll get the Rocky back in here and we'll get um, the uh, track, the, e the e Eco Box and the 205 and get that all hooked up and we'll show you, we'll show you guys how, how that all works. It's actually a pretty cool setup. Way more economical than going with an Atlas. You know, we were looking at an Atlas, but Shane's like, this is a better option, in which I agree too, because then with the money we save on that, we're, we're going to go ahead and just get a set of Ford, 05 Plus Ford, Ford Super Duty axles for it, just like that or beneath my 5th Gen 4Runner. And then, you know, you can get a set of those for like a thousand bucks where somebody wants for a Dana 60, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for a decent Dana 60 Kingpin. So using the Eco Box and then going with, with the 05 Plus Super Duty axles and, and the Ford uh, transfer case will save us money on, on the axles and it'll actually be a way better setup. And it'll be, you know, like I like 05 uh, Ford Super Duty axles, like the 05 Plus ones, because of just how easy it is to change out the parts. You can just change a unit bearing out or whatever. You don't have to deal with bearings and grease. And they're, they're, they're just very service friendly and they're very, very strong because they're meant for, you know, an 8,500 pound truck. So I think that's pretty cool to use those. So we're going to go ahead and set this up with those with the Northwest Fab Eco Box and a Ford transfer case. I think it's a 205. Don't quote me. I'm not certain. 
but I think that'll be a pretty cool setup. But in the meantime, we've got the C10 back in, in, in here in the next episode. I'll, I'll be doing brake lines on that, and we, we got some cool Will, Willwood parts for it, so I'll, I'll take you guys along the way with me and show you guys all, all those then. But anyways, guys, if you guys like this kind of content, let me know in the comment box. And if you guys like Cougar House Garage, you like what we do, check us out at cougarhousegarage.com. The website's coming together. Just give us more time. We're, 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 we're going to have all of our products on there and up there and ready for uh, selling and purchasing. So be patient. And then uh, also check us out at Cougar House Fab or Facebook forward slash Cougar House Fab. And then check us out on Instagram, guys. We're Cougar House Garage there. And then um, follow follow along with the daily story and you guys can keep up with all the crazy projects but I'm very active on, on the daily story there so you guys can follow along with what, with what we're doing every day at the Cougar House so but anyways guys thanks for watching we'll catch you guys next episode